In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Palm Sunday evening. On Palm Sunday evening, we begin the Holy and Great uh, Week, and we celebrate the entrance of the Bridegroom, Christ, and uh, the Noble Joseph. The book of Genesis tells us how Joseph was the eleventh of Jacob's twelve sons and Rahel's firstborn. Joseph uh, was uh, sold into slavery by his uh, jealous uh, brothers, yet um, uh, rose to become the most uh, powerful man in Egypt next to Pharaoh. When feminine uh, struck uh, the land, uh, he brought uh, the sons of Israel down to Egypt, where they were settled in the land of Yesen. Joseph, son of Israel, Jacob, and Rahel, lived in the land of Canaan with eleven brothers and one sister. He was Rahel's firstborn and Israel's eleventh son. Of all the sons, Joseph was loved by his father the most. Israel even arrayed Joseph with a long coat of many colors. Israel's uh, favoritism towards Joseph caused his half-brothers to hate him, and when Joseph uh, was uh, 17 years old, he had uh, two dreams that made his brothers plot his uh, demise. In the first dream, Joseph and his brothers gathered uh, bundles uh, of grain. Then uh, all of the grain bundles that had been prepared by the brothers gathered around Joseph's bundle and bowed down to it. In the second dream, the sun, which represented his father, and the moon, his mother, and eleven stars, his brothers, bowed down to Joseph himself. When he told these two dreams to his brothers, they despised him for the implications that the family would be bowing uh, down to Joseph. They became jealous that their father would even uh, ponder uh, over Joseph's uh, words concerning uh, these dreams. And this we find in Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 to 11. Joseph's uh, half-brothers hated him uh, so much, especially for his dreams, that they even called him, ironically, this dreamer. While in Adathana, when they were feeding the flocks, the brothers saw Joseph from afar and plotted to kill him. However, the oldest brother, Rebum, did not want Joseph to die. He suggested to have Joseph thrown into an empty cistern, uh, until uh, they could uh, figure out what to do with him. He intended to rescue Joseph and return him uh, to his father. Unaware of their intent, Joseph approached uh, his brothers. They turned uh, on him and stripped him uh, of the coat his father made for him, and they threw him into the cistern that uh, Rebum had suggested. As they pondered uh, what to do with Joseph, the brothers uh, saw a camel caravan of Ismailites coming out of Gilead, carrying spices and perfumes to Egypt for trade. Judah, the strongest, uh, thought twice about killing Joseph and proposed that he be sold. The traders uh, paid 20 pieces of silver for Joseph. The brothers uh, were responsible for their missing brother, and they had to answer to their father. So they put uh, male goat's blood on Joseph's coat and showed it to Jacob, who deeply mourned for his son, believing him as being dead. Genesis chapter 37, verses 12 to 35. The text of the biblical story is muddled over who sold Joseph into slavery, which of the brothers, Rabun or Judah. 
and uh, whether he was sold to Midianites traders or Ismaelites traders. Uh, what is clear is uh, that Joseph was sold to serve uh, Potiphar, the captain of, of Pharaoh's guard. While serving in Potiphar's uh, household, uh, God was uh, with uh, Joseph so that uh, he proposed prospered in everything he, he did. Joseph found favor in the sight of Potiphar, and so he became his personal servant. Then Joseph uh, was uh, promoted uh, to, ov to oversee Potiphar's entire household as a superintendent. After some time, Potiphar's wife began to desire Joseph and shout to have an affair with him. Despite her persistence, Joseph refused to have uh, any sexual relationship with her for fear of sinning against God. After some days uh, of begging for him, she grabbed him uh, by his cloak but he escaped from her, leaving his garment behind, fleeing naked. Angered by his running away from her, she took his garment and made a false claim against him by charging that he tried to have sex with her. This resulted in Joseph being thrown into prison. We find all this information in Genesis chapter 39 verses 1 to 20. The warden uh, put uh, Joseph in charge of the other prisoners, and soon afterwards Pharaoh's uh, chief cupbearer and chief baker, who had offended uh, the Pharaoh, were thrown into prison. They both uh, had dreams, and they asked Joseph to help interpretate them. The chief cupbearer uh, had uh, held a vine in his hand with three branches that brought forth grapes. He took them to Pharaoh and put them in his cup. The chief baker had three baskets of bread on his head intended for Pharaoh, but some birds came along and ate the bread. Joseph told them that within three days the chief cup bearer will be reinstated, but the chief baker would be hanged. Joseph requested the cupbearer to mention him to Pharaoh and secure his release from prison. But the cupbearer, reinstalled in office, forgot Joseph. After Joseph was in prison for two more years, Pharaoh had two dreams which disturbed him. He dreamt of seven lean cows which rose out of the river and devour seven uh, fat cows, and of seven withered ears of grain, which devoured seven fat ears. Pharaoh's uh, wise men uh, were unable to interpret these dreams, but the chief cup bearer remembered Joseph and spoke of his skills to Pharaoh. Joseph uh, was called for and interpreted uh, the dreams, as a foretelling that seven years of abundance will be followed by seven years of famine, and advised the Pharaoh to store su sur sur supplies, grain, during the years of abundance. Pharaoh acknowledged that Joseph's uh, proposal to store grain during the abundant period was very wise. So before Joseph uh, was uh, even 30 years old, Pharaoh released him uh, from prison and put him in charge over all the land of Egypt as a vizier. The Pharaoh took uh, off his uh, signet ring and put it on Joseph's hand, then clothed him uh, in fine linen and put a gold necklace uh, around his neck. He was then uh, renamed Safnath Papeania and uh, was given Asinath, the daughter of Potipherar, who was uh, the priest of On, to be his wife. 
During those seven years of abundance, Joseph ensured that uh, the storehouses were full and that all produced was uh, measured until uh, there was so much that it became immeasurable. In the final year of abundance, Asinath bore two children to Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. When the famine came, it was uh, so severe that people from surrounding nations from all over the earth came to Egypt to buy bread as this nation was the only kingdom prepared for the 70 years brought. The narrative also indicates that they went straight to Joseph or were directed to him even by Pharaoh himself so as to buy from him. Genesis chapter 41 verses 37 to 57. The seven-year famine became so severe that uh, toward the later period even Egypt was being strangled because the Egyptians had uh, used up all of their money to buy grain in uh, the previous years. There was no more money left. All they had was uh, their livestock and even uh, that dwindling down to nothing. As a last uh, result, all of the inhabitants of Egypt, less uh, the Egypt in a priestly class, sold all their properties to Joseph uh, for seed. These uh, pro properties now became the property of Pharaoh, or in other words, government property. Joseph also said uh, a mandate that because uh, they will be harvesting a seed on government property, a fifth of the producer uh, should uh, go to the pharaoh. Giving a fifth to the produced uh, to pharaoh, continuing down to the days of Moses, Genesis 47, verses uh, 20 to 31. In the second year of famine, Joseph's half-brother were sent to Egypt by their father Israel to buy goods. When they came to Egypt, they stood before the vizier, but did not recognize him to be their brother Joseph. How, how, however, Joseph did recognize them and did not receive them kindly. Rather, he discussed uh, him discussed uh, himself and uh, spoke to them in the Egyptian language using an interpreter. He did not speak uh, at all to them in his native uh, language Hebrew. After questioning them uh, as to where they came from, he accused them of being spies. They plead him uh, with uh, that they were only their only purpose was to buy grain for their family in the land of Canaan. After they mentioned that they had left a younger brother at home, the Joseph demanded that he be brought to Egypt as a demonstration of their veracity. This uh, brother was Joseph's blood brother, Benjamin. He placed his brothers uh, in prison for three days. On the third day, he brought them out of prison and reiterated that, that he wanted their youngest brother brought to Egypt to de demonstrate their veracity. The brothers uh, conferred uh, amongst themselves, speaking in Hebrew, reflecting on uh, the wrong they had done to Joseph. Joseph understood what they were saying and removed himself from uh, their presence because he was uh, caught in emotion. When he returned, uh, the vizier uh, took uh, Simeon and bound him uh, as a hostage. Then he had uh, their donkeys prepared with grain and sent uh, the other brothers back to Canaan. On a big uh, to them, unknown to them, was uh, that Joseph had also returned their money to their money sacks, Genesis chapter 42, verses 1 to 28. The remaining, remaining brothers 
returned to their father in Canaan and told him all that had transpired in Egypt. They also discovered that all of their money sacks were still uh, uh, full, and uh, they were dismayed. They then uh, they informed uh, their father that the vizier uh, demanded that Je Benjamin uh, be brought before him uh, to demonstrate that they were honest men. Israel became greatly distressed, feeling uh, that they treated him uh, badly. After they had uh, con consumed all of the grain that they brought back from Egypt, Israel told his sons to go back to Egypt for more grain. With uh, Reuben uh, and Judah's uh, persistence, they pursued, persuaded uh, their father to let Benjamin join them for fear of Egyptian retribution. Genesis chapter 42 verses 29 to 43. Upon uh, their return to Egypt, uh, the brothers uh, were received by the steward of the house of Joseph. When uh, they were brought to, to Joseph's house, they became afraid because of the return money in uh, their money sacks. They thought uh, that uh, the missed transaction would somehow be used against them as a, a way to induct them as slaves and confiscate their possessions. So they immediately informed the, the steward of, of what had transpired to get a, a feel of the situation. On the contrary, the steward put them at ease telling them not to worry of the money, and then he brought out their brother Simeon. They all went into the house of Joseph and were received there with hospitality. When, the, when Joseph appeared, they gave him a gift from their father. Joseph saw and inquired of Benjamin and was overcome by emotion, but did not show it. He retreated to his chambers and wept. When he gained control of himself, he returned and brought out the feast. Now, as it was at the time, Egyptians did not allow Hebrews to eat with them at the same table, as that was considered loathsome. So when Joseph brought food over the table of the sons of Israel, they were astonished. Genesis chapter 43, verses 16 to 44. That night Joseph ordered his sister were to load uh, the brothers' uh, donkeys with food and all their money. The money they brought uh, was doubled what they had uh, from uh, the first time. Deceptively, Joseph also ordered that his uh, silver cup uh, be put uh, in Benjamin's sack. The following morning, the brothers began uh, their journey back to Canaan. At the Joseph's command, uh, the steward was uh, to apprehend uh, them and question them about the silver cup. When uh, the steward caught up uh, with uh, the brothers, he seized them uh, and uh, searched their sacks. The steward found the cup in Benjamin's sack just as he had planted it the night before. This caused a stir amongst the brothers. However, they agreed to be escorted back to Egypt. When uh, Joseph uh, confronted uh, them about the silver cup, uh, he demanded uh, that the one uh, who possessed uh, the cup in his bag become his slave. In response, Judah pleaded with, uh, the, uh, with Joseph that Benjamin be allowed to return to his father and he himself be kept in Benjamin's place as a slave. Genesis chapter 44. Judah appealed to Joseph, begging uh, that Benjamin be released and uh, that he be enslaved in his stead. 
because of the silver cup found in Benjamin's sack. Joseph broke down into tears. He could not control himself any longer, and so he sent the Egyptian men out of the house. Then he revealed to them that he was in fact their brother Joseph. He wept so loudly that even the Egyptian's household uh, heard it outside. The brothers were frozen and could not uh, utter a word. He brought them closer and relay, relied uh, to them and the event that had happened and told them not to fear that what they had meant for evil, God had meant for good. Then he commanded them to go and bring their father and his entire household into Egypt to live in the providence of Goshen because there were five more years of famine left. So Joseph supplied them Egyptian transport wagons, new garments, silver money, and 20 additional donkeys carrying provisions for the journey. Genesis chapter 45 verses 1 to 28. Thus Israel and all his entire household of 17 gather up uh, with all uh, their livestock and began their journey to Egypt. As they approached the Egyptian uh, territory, jo uh, Judah went ahead to ask Joseph where the, the caravan should uh, unload. They were directed into the province of Joshen, and Joseph uh, read it his chariot to meet his father there. It had been 22 years since Joseph had seen his father. When they met, they embraced each other and wept together for quite a while. His father then remarked, Now let me die since I have seen your face because you are still alive. Genesis 46 verses 1 to 34. Afterward, Joseph's family personally met the Pharaoh of Egypt. The Pharaoh honored their stay and even proposed that if there were any qualified men in their house, then they may elect a chief herdsman to oversee Egyptian livestock. Because the Pharaoh had such a high regard for Joseph, Practically making him his equal, it had been an honor to meet his father. Thus Israel was able to bless the Pharaoh. Genesis chapter 47 verses 1 to 47. The house of Israel acquired many possessions and multiplied exceedingly during the course of 17 years. 17 years, even through the worst of the seven-year famine. At this time, Joseph's father was 147 years old, and be Britain. He had fallen ill and lost most of his vision. Joseph was called into his father's house, and Israel pleaded with his son that he not be buried in Egypt. Rather, he requested to be carried to the land of Canaan to be buried with his uh, forefathers. Joseph was sworn to do as his father asked of him. Genesis chapter 47, verses 27 to 31. Later, Joseph came to visit his father, having with him his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Israel declared that they would be heirs to the inheritance of the house of Israel as if they were his own children just as Rebum and Simeon were. Then Israel laid his left hand on the eldest Manasseh's head and his right hand on the youngest Ephraim's head and blessed Joseph. However, Joseph was uh, displeased 
that uh, his father's right hand was not on the head of his firstborn, so he switched his father's hand. But Israel refused, saying, But truly his younger brother shall be greater than him. Genesis chapter 48 verses 1 to 22. Then Israel called all of sons in and prophesied their blessings uh, or curses to all twelve of them in order of their ages. Genesis chapter 49 verses 22 to 26. After relaying his prophecies, Israel died. The family, including the Egyptians, mourned his uh, seven, 70 days. Joseph had his um, uh, father embelled a process that took 40 days. Then uh, he prepared a great uh, ceremonial journey to Canaan, leading uh, the servants of the Pharaoh and the elders of the houses of Israel and Egypt beyond uh, the Jordan River. They stopped at Atad, where they observed seven days of mourning. Here, their lamentation was so great that it caught the attention of surrounding Canaanites, who remarked, This is a deep mourning of the Egyptians. So they named this spot Abel Mizrem. Then uh, Joseph buried Israel in the cave of Machafelal, in uh, the property of Abraham, when uh, he brought, uh, bought it from uh, the Hittites. Genesis chapter 49, verses 33 to 50. After their father died, the brothers of Joseph uh, feared a retribution uh, for being responsible for Joseph's deliverance into Egypt as a slave. Joseph wet, wept as they spoke and told them that uh, what had happened was God's purpose to save lives and the lives of his family. He comfort, comforted them and uh, their ties uh, were re reconciled. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. Joseph lived to the age of 110, living uh, to see his great-grandchildren. Before he died, he made the children of Israel swear that when uh, they left the land of Egypt, they will uh, take his uh, bones with them, and on his death, his body was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. Genesis chapter 50, verses 22 to 26. The children of Israel remember their oath. And when they left Egypt during the Exodus, Moses took Joseph's bones with him. Exodus chapter 13 verse 19. The bones were buried at Sihim in uh, the parcel of ground which J Jacob bought for the sons of Amor. J Joshua chapter 24 verse 32, which was uh, traditionally being identified with uh, the site of Joseph's tomb before Jacob and all his family moved to Egypt. Sihim was in the land which was allocated by Joshua to the tribe of Ephraim, one of the tribes of the house of Joseph, after the conquest of Canaan. The life of Saint Joseph the Noble is a prophesied act uh, for the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We could uh, actually explain it in this parallel composition. As Joseph was the beloved son of Jacob, so was Jesus Christ the son, the beloved son 
of God the Father. As Joseph was hated by his brothers, likewise Jesus Christ, the true Messiah, was hated by his uh, fellow countrymen, the Jews. As Joseph were, was sold by his brothers to the <coughs> Ismaelites and then was sold as a slave in the land of Egypt, so likewise Christ was sold by Judah for 30 pieces of silver. As Joseph was uh, put in the, the pit for three days and then they took him out, likewise Christ was buried in the tomb for three days and on the third day he was risen as the one and only true God, man God, Jesus Christ. As Joseph was glorified in the land of Egypt, likewise Christ, the Son of God, was glorified by his Father in his church and in all his glory after his crucifixion and resurrection. As Joseph saved, not only the land of the people of Egypt, but also his whole family and all the surrounding countries from the famine. Likewise, Jesus Christ, the incarnated Son of God, the true Messiah, uh, saved all mankind from the slavery of sin. And as Saint Joseph the Noble, was glorified by the Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. Likewise, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was glorified by the Father after his resurrection and the sitting on the right hand of his Father in God's kingdom. I pray that this day be an example for all Orthodox Christians to follow the example, the noble life of St. Joseph, to avoid all sinful sexual relationships which are not blessed by the Church, for only in marriage which is blessed by the Church is a noble relationship. All other relationships outside of holy matrimony are not blessed and are not allowed by God and by His Holy Orthodox Church. Also, I pray that the Bridegroom, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, also bless us and guide us to our salvation in order for us to inherit the eternal kingdom in God's heavenly places. Amen.